in the new Wolf Under update, we have the F-20A, which is locked behind the pack vehicle. It's an F-18 engine in an F-5. So big engine, small plane. Anyway, I know some of you are excited to buy your way to level 12 in War Thunder with the pack F-20A. I'm more excited by something a bit more exotique. And that would be the BF-109C1. Look at that little propeller. It's only a twin propeller. It's like a civilian general aviation plane. It's so cute. Equipped with just four like machine guns, two in the middle and two over here. It's kind of interesting. It's it's air takes here. You got the twin engines at the back, and you got a gun pod built in underneath. They got okay, not bad. They got a new F five, which I don't care much about. But what I do care about are squadron vehicles. Squadron vehicles are great because you can passively grind them over like three to six months. So that's not bad. More squadron vehicles. I see as a good bonus for everyone. Yep, that's a detailed cockpit. Could I even start this aircraft up? Caution, do not lower gear above 300 knots. Okay, I can keep that in mind. I can do the ejection. I think I can handle that. Everything else I'm not too sure about. Uh, news to Italy in the aviation is that they just got a whole new tech tree whacked in. But it doesn't really excite me. It's the Hungarian air tree. So Hungarian representation of War Thunder. But to me, it's just another copy-paste tree because all of these planes are already in the game. France got a new jet. They got the Alpha Jet E. Isn't this that thing we just saw in the German tech tree, the weird thing? Yeah, same thing that I was looking at in the German tree with the funny gun underneath. Yes, the German one is packing a 27mm gun, whereas the French one is packing 30mm. Wow, I have the autism to spot that, but not the autism to remember people's birthdays. Ain't that great. That's all the planes! Congratulations! <laughs> we World War II fans got one whole unique plane in this update. And it's the BF-109 with a twin propeller. That's it! If you like World War II in War Thunder, this is all you're getting for the entire update. If you don't care about World War II or care about all planes of warfare, you got the Alpha Jet and the F-20A. Kinda. It's not entirely new, it's similar to the F-5, isn't it? If you like War Thunder and looking forward to new unique planes with new unique models, I guess it's the Alpha Jet. Okay, onwards to the ground vehicles. Let's get some optimism back in here. For the US of A, they got a new Abrams. Can you imagine America not getting Abrams in a patch? Literally unbelievable. Is it me or is this Abrams extra chonky? Is he in one too many cheeseburgers? Or am I making this up? Wait a minute. That's an Abrams turret on an M60 hull. And the reason that I'm a bit baffled is for the turret, you've got advanced composite materials. Layers and layers and layers of ceramics and composite materials and then for the hull you just got some armor? It's sloped I guess. So yes, we got a Abrams with the armor protection of a World War II tank. Ain't that wacky. Finally, I can show you something actually interesting. Look at this goofy goober. Look at him go. It's quad machine cannon 103s. Four of them! They're amazing stuff, they're high velocity 30mm auto cannons. And you get four of them strapped to an anti aircraft vehicle with zero protection, but you're packing the DACA. Woo! We get one new unique World War II vehicle in this patch as well. Woo! Let's go, baby! They're gonna remove this belt at some point, so enjoy this belt while it's still here. Over to the USSR. Wait, a new ZSU 23. It's a Shilka, but they strapped missiles to it? What? What is- No! You can't strap missiles to this! You're putting your eggs all in one basket, you're supposed to give this to some infantry people. Is it fire and forget radar? So fire and forget IR, I mean. Yeah, just fire and forget IR. Why would you give IR missiles to the AA system? Why would you give missiles to a shulker? This thing already was scary. The radar was pretty good as well. You got quad 23mm cannons, they don't fuck around. Yep, yeah, I'm just confused. Why would you add heat-seeking missiles to a Shilka? Of course, this being War Thunder, the Soviets got another premium T-80. The T-80UD. Oh look, it's got a snorkel! You don't really see those in War Thunder much. Look, it's a snorkel! I hope. I hope I'm not an idiot, but that looks like a snorkel that you stick on the back of the vehicle when you go wading. I say armor package because I see like these sort of rubber things added to the vehicle. 
And then on the sides near the front, you've got ERA packages. Just a T-80 with a T-72 engine and an armor package of swords. Bro, what the heck, Gaijin? Why is the schnorkel not working automatically? Literally unplayable. There's the fox now. I imagine you want to probably be doing spotting, artillery call-ins, that sort of thing. A little bit of downhill, 100 kbh, please! Oh, 99! This is agonizing! 99, we topped out at 99. Japan has the Type 90B. It's got a camera that's in built-in, that's kind of cute. I know it's just cosmetic, but it's nice, because you don't see many vehicles with War Thunder with camera netting wrapped around it. It's just known as the ZBD-04A. So it's got a twin cannon system where it's like one fires the shaped charge rocket or whatever the other thing's the main cannon. Yeah, you can see it takes a little time to arm. So I assume I can use... Oh, there we go, I can fire it independently. Okay, this is very curious to me. This is a rocket which you fire and it doesn't ignite straight away. Is this a new feature in War Thunder or has this always been here? Is this unique to this vehicle? Look, it's like boodunk. And then the guidance kicks in after a while. The missile fires, it dips down, the fins kick in, and then after all of that happens, then the rocket motor kicks in. But as you can see, it couldn't even bend this thing over here. It fires very fast though, I'll give it that. What is that, like four seconds? And you got an auto cannon. And there goes the splash shield, and we're floating. But yeah, you get the idea. Amphibious vehicle, infantry support. Moving on to Italy. Oh boy, I hope they don't get another Centurio. Oh look, they got another Centurio. Oh, it's the Hungarian Cent... You can't just keep adding these to War Thunder. You can't just copy-paste the same vehicle like 12 times, Gaijin. Come on. You just stuck a flag on it. Okay, off to France. What did France get? They got a new AA, the VTT DCA. So they just got an M16 on a tracked chassis. It's just a tracked hull with an M16 turret. Meat chopper, but more mobile. I don't know what you're expecting, it's just a meat chopper on a hull. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. It's just a good AA. More countries can use M16s, and this is one way to give them M16s so I just copy and pasting an M16. It's a leopard too, but it looks very chunky, or a leopard's always this chunky. Israel got a new Macava. Is it actually new or is it just a premium version of something that already existed? Pretty sure it's just something that already existed, but it's now premium. Helicopters, yes! They don't excite me that much, but there's one helicopter coming up I'm interested by. Helicopter AH-1. It's another AH. What makes it different from the Z? I do not know. Or the F. Germany did not get any new helicopters. USSR did not get any new heli- Br Great Britain got a new helicopter. It's a great pickup line. We sex now. There's some goofy British helicopters, so I'm glad they added this guy to the game. Interesting. Normally you get the engine located further back, but it's up in the front, below the pilots. That's unusual, isn't it? Oh wow, don't don't use all that firepower all in one place with those twin light machine guns. Okay, what kind of missile system do we have here? Firing range seven kilometers. Better armor pen as well. More boom on contact too. And Israel got the AH sixty. So the Americans already had that, didn't they? What are the spikes? Guidance IR. Air to ground. I know these were probably in-game in already, but I don't normally notice the stuff. And you get to carry a lot of these missiles. I remember people were basically complaining that in real life you could lock an air-to-air -air missile onto a ground target. And it was tested in like the Korean War. It was kind of useless, IRL, because the missiles don't have enough boom in them. But even so, it was possible. But in War Thunder, it doesn't work like that. On to the Navy, which most people don't care about, but I might as well cover since I'm here. Going for the US, they have this a ship. No one's gonna grind it. Next. HMS Diamond, what are you? Okay, cool. You're one up from a destroyer, but below a light cruiser. All five naval players unite. Japan, on the other hand, they are now packing the biggest gun in War Thunder once again. 410 millimeter shells. See, how much HE did they pack? <laughs> 46 kilogram HE shells. So this is the biggest diameter shell launching machine in the game. And if you want, we got armor piercing variants too. You just brute force your way through 775 millimeters of armor. This could maybe take on a Yag Tiger. If it got the drop on it in the Ardennes. 
That's an impressive conning tower. Less of a superstructure and more of just an Eiffel Tower they built on top of a ship. Fire! So this is all HE, so 8 times 45 kilograms of HE shells flying through the air. What, 30% uh, of the crew knocked out? Kind of expected a little more. 30 second reloads? How did Japan do that? On 42 centimeter shells. Italy got a new ship as well. Preview, it's a BR 5.3 ship. It actually looks like a relatively practical battleship. Are those sideways torpedo launchers? I've attracted my statement. Yep, those are sideways torpedo tubes. I thought we did away with those after the First World War. Get a little Italian seaplane. It's got a twin machine gun. And you've got a little turret in the back. Onward to France. They've got a couple of new ships too. They've got a new top tier BR 6.7 ship. A big chonker. Looks all dreadnought class. The other French ship, BR 4.0. Looks like a destroyer. Small petite, a few cannons. What's that at the back? Oh, just winches for the... That's an interesting assembly here. There's a few other things that got added that are not quite new vehicles, but I thought they were interesting enough for me to bring up anyway. When you go to the Meteor Mark III, now got a 1,000 pound bomb unlock. And one other thing that I actually care about. I played the Ju87 R2 only because it carries the 1,000 kilogram bomb. Now, nicely enough, Gaijin has added the 1,000 kilogram bomb to the B2 variant. Which is great! And the reason I'm actually excited over that, we're like, well, why don't you just play the R2 instead of the B2? Because the B2 is the Stuka variant with the sirens. So now I can play the B2 variant with the terrifying siren sound and drop the one-ton bomb instead of having to just play the R2 which carries the one-ton bomb and have no siren. If I had to summarize the new War Thunder update, I would say, for me personally, it's another meh. But supposedly they've added a lot of quality of life stuff to the game. They're following the roadmap of progress that the community kind of like downvoted War Thunder and Steam for a long time. And I got War Thunder to, you know, actually get its act together. Regarding vehicles that interest me, this vehicle is the only thing I really care about in the update and will probably add to my lineup. I do like my German lineups and a new anti-aircraft that actually looks like it's fun to play is a welcome addition. That's my reaction to the War Thunder update. There's only like two vehicles I care about.